Hello and welcome to module 2 of the NPTEL MOOCs course on Economics of Health and Education. In this module 2, we will study about the microeconomic foundations of health and education. So, we will basically see how the concepts and tools of microeconomics are used while studying how the uh, goods called health and education when they are traded in the market for education and health. So, we will look at some of the unique or unusual characteristics that surround uh, that we need to consider, we need to understand when we are studying uh, economics of health and education. Uh, this is week uh, 2 and lesson 1 of this course and in this lesson 1 we will study about some of the important aspects of uh, healthcare economics. We will begin with health and then slowly we will move on to education when we are looking at the microeconomic foundations of health and education. So, uh, let us uh, make a beginning to studying the healthcare uh, market. As a student of social sciences, many of you must have come across the concept of market. And you would know that the concept of market is used when we are trying to trade some kind of a good or a service. And uh, but in our case here, the good under question is healthcare and education. And uh, anybody would probably know that you know there has to be certain unusual uh, characteristics that now, are, can be associated with uh, healthcare and education. And the market in which health is traded is referred to as the healthcare uh, market. So, we also know that the nature of the good in question also impacts the nature of the market. Therefore, we need to understand what is the nature of this uh, health care that we are talking about that brings in certain unusual characteristics for the uh, market as well. Are there any unique aspects of health care that we need to consider or there are certain characteristics which also probably is associated with other areas of uh, the economy as well, but we encounter more often in the case of uh, health care. Now, to be able to understand this, we need to first ask the question, what does health care uh, represent? Now, all of you must have encountered uh, the health system at some point of time in your life when you must have been to doctors and diagnostic centers and so on. So, when you uh, think of a healthcare uh, market or if you think about what does healthcare represent, you can start imagining or picturizing in your mind a collection of services. So, services would mean let us say services of doctors and nurses and uh, diagnostic centers and so on. Uh, similarly, a collection of products, products would refer to let us say medicines and drugs and different kinds of uh, uh, choices that you are making for um, you know going to a particular diagnostic center and not to the others or a choice that you are making for a kind of surgery that you want to go to in consultation with your doctors or healthcare providers and so on. Institutions, uh, it can also refer to collection of institutions. For example, I am sure all of you must have encountered government health institutions, private health institutions or and there are various other kinds of health institutions such as missionary based health institutions, there are NGO based health institutions. So, there are different kinds of institutions and institutional frameworks also within which healthcare services are traded. We can also think of healthcare as a collection of regulations, particularly with regard to the way the hospitals and dispensaries are regulated or licensed or also the licensor activities uh, that are carried out with respect to healthcare professionals, particularly doctors and nurses who have to go through certain specified uh, kinds of education to be able to get a license to uh, practice in the healthcare market. But above everything else, uh, healthcare also refers to people because the healthcare market primarily thrives because we are concerned about the market is the, the governments or markets are primarily concerned about the health of the people or the well-being of the people. So, ultimately this market is mostly concerned about production of health and provisioning of healthcare services. Now, if you look at the uh, estimate that I have mentioned on the slide that USA spends about 17 percent of its GDP on healthcare, whereas India spends about 1.3 percent of its GDP on healthcare. Now, what does this estimate say? This estimate says that the volume of the healthcare market is also very different as far as different countries are concerned, depending upon which government is spending more or which government is spending less. So, this estimate itself provokes us to interrogate uh, the matter of healthcare spending further. However, we will keep this matter for uh, later. So, what does healthcare represent? Healthcare represents a collection of services, of products, institutions, regulations and all of these put together for the well-being of the people which means that the healthcare market is primarily concerned with production of health and production of health that um, contributes to the well-being of its uh, people. 
Okay, now while the healthcare sector has uh, many individual characteristics that are common to other areas of the economy, but there are certain aspects of healthcare economics that makes it uh, unusual. There are certain features that we frequently encounter in healthcare markets to exclusively in the healthcare markets if I may say. So much so that they have a large bearing on the way the healthcare markets function. Now one of the first is that the extent of government involvement in healthcare market is quite large. Now you cannot think of availing a health service uh, in a country such as ours let us say in a democratic structure without encountering with the government and countries such as ours which have a federal structure and where health is both a central matter as well as a state matter uh, there are various kinds of governance structures within the country as well and they have different kinds of rules and regulations in place to be able to access health care. So in India you have state level hospitals, you have hospitals at the district level, you have medical facilities at the village level and different states may have different regulations in place to be able to carry out uh, different kinds of uh, health management practices. So government's involvement, direct involvement with regard to provisioning of healthcare services is huge as far as uh, the uh, modern societies are concerned. The second unusual aspect is that when we make a choice of availing a healthcare service, it is almost always due to an illness which is a random event. And like all random events, illnesses also have an element of uncertainty to it. Okay? So you do not make a choice to fall ill and then place a demand on health services. It's a compulsion on your part to be able to place a demand in the healthcare market. For example, if you want to make a purchase decision of a phone in the market, you know that a certain kind of, you, you may have a certain taste and preference for a certain kind of phone and therefore you know that a phone has a certain utility for you and therefore you go to the market and place a choice for the phone in the market. Whereas the healthcare services are concerned, you do not have the choice of being able to make a demand on a certain kind of a healthcare product. And there are certain uh, demands that you can make for healthcare products which does not have far reaching consequences. But healthcare services and products which have far reaching consequences definitely has to be gone through the health service provider. Okay? So you are compelled to do it because you are suffering from some kind of a disease or an illness which threatens your uh, well-being and therefore there is an element of uncertainty as far as healthcare markets is concerned. Now this uncertainty ranges from the randomness of the individual's illnesses to the understanding of the kind of uh, uh, treatment that the patient consumer needs to have. Okay? So there is a dominant presence of uncertainty at all levels of healthcare which starts with individual's illnesses to understanding how well medical treatments can work and for whom. So which means that uncertainty in the health market does not just dominate in the consumer patient uh, case but also as far as the health provider is concerned which means both on the demand side as well as on the supply side. Now the third unusual aspect of healthcare economics is that there is a large difference in the knowledge base of the doctors who are the healthcare providers and the patients or the patient consumers who are the consumers of uh, healthcare and therefore it makes it very difficult for the patient consumer to make an informed choice regarding what kind of healthcare demand must take place in the market. Okay? And as far as the healthcare service provider is concerned, apart from the um, uh, fact that there is an element of trust that is to be built between the healthcare service provider and the consumer patient who is making a demand on the healthcare uh, system, apart from this element of trust, there is also an element of profit motive involved. Because like any other good or service which is being traded in the market, you are the production of health is taking place in the market and the consumer patient has to pay a price for it. So there is also a profit motive uh, involved when we are trading health in the in the healthcare market, and this difference in knowledge between the doctors, the healthcare providers, and the consumer patients has a very important role to play uh, when it comes to healthcare provisioning in healthcare markets. And finally, health of people and provision of health are also characterized by the presence of externalities. So what are externalities? They are basically characteristics that impose costs or create benefits on other people within the health system. 
and we experience uh, you must note here that we experience externalities in many other sectors of the economy as well. Uh, for example, the most common uh, example being that of industries or polluting industries and how pollution has an impact on effect on the uh, people surrounding the polluting factory let us say and how that gives rise to negative externalities and so on. And therefore, then the question of valuation of those kinds of negative externalities by imposing a tax on the polluting industry or the factory and so on. So, externalities are not something which is uh, new to sector of the economy, but what is unusual with respect to the health sector is that externalities uh, impact valuation of uh, production of health in almost every stage of uh, the process. Okay? And we do not have to look very far to be able to understand the role of externalities in the uh, health sector because we are all in the grip of a communicable disease such as COVID-19 which has impacted almost every aspect, uh, every th thinkable aspect of uh, uh, economic life across the uh, globe. So, these are the four important uh, aspects of healthcare economics that uh, play a very important role as to how healthcare is demanded and how healthcare is supplied in the market. Uh, let us look at each of these, uh, uh, you know, unusual aspects of healthcare economics a little more closely uh, and understand further. So, let us uh, begin with uh, government intervention. You see, governments intervene in many markets, but what is unusual about the health market is that uh, as I was saying that at every stage of production of health, governments play a very important role. Okay? So, one of the most common uh, forms of intervention is uh, licensure of healthcare professionals because of which there are rigorous examinations conducted to test the competence of healthcare professionals. Now, many other professions also require licensing. For example, you know airplane pilots or there are automobile pilots or there are beauticians and lawyers and various other kinds of professionals who might also require licensing uh, for practicing in an economy. But uh, why is it that the healthcare professionals are scrutinized far more uh, than the other uh, professionals? And uh, the simple answer for that is primarily because right to life is a basic human right and the, uh, the practices of healthcare professionals have a direct bearing on the uh, right to uh, live. And therefore, uh, you know, the scrutiny is uh, probably more in the case of the healthcare uh, professionals. Now, what are the other ways in which the governments involve themselves in uh, provision of healthcare services? The governments can also directly control the economic behavior of healthcare providers such as hospitals and dispensaries and uh, nursing homes and doctors and uh, the paramedical doctors and so on. Now, often you may have come across phrases such as whether you are being treated by a doctor or a quack. Now, so there is a tendency for imposters to penetrate the health system for profit and the, which can have disastrous impact on the health of an individual. Therefore, there is a full-fledged government mechanism in place to ensure that healthcare professionals are certified and they should also follow meritorious uh, practices. Okay? Uh, so, this is a second way in which the governments can uh, intervene or directly control the economic behavior of healthcare providers. There is a third way in which this can happen. Um, you know, there is a heavy pressure of people on the public healthcare system and uh, anybody who has some preliminary understanding of how healthcare systems such as that in India function, you would see that there is a lot of crowding in public healthcare systems, the primary healthcare centers or the urban state dispensaries, the state government hospitals and so on and so forth. Now, keeping the burden that public health systems have to uh, bear. Uh, due to the pressure of population on uh, these uh, uh, healthcare systems, the governments might also compel the um, uh, individuals who have the ability to pay and have good health seeking behavior to buy insurance, health insurance uh, from the um, market. Now, there may be individuals being compelled to pay for uh, health insurance or there may be institutional healthcare insurance. So, the governments are very well within their power to uh, uh, to compel individuals and institutions to provide health insurance and function through the health insurance market. There is a fourth way in which governments all intervene and that is by providing insurance or financial aid against health expenses for extremely diverse set of people. For example, in India, 
with the help of the Ayushman Bharat. Uh, you all know that you know we have health insurance for uh, people below the poverty line. Uh, similarly, in many other countries, there are uh, special kinds of insurances that are provided to elderly people in the form of social security insurance, which includes health insurance for military veterans. There may be health insurance and healthcare expenditure for children with birth defects or uh, who are permanently disabled, migrant workers, school children. In India, we do have uh, uh, healthcare programs uh, for uh, school children where a group of uh, doctors and medical uh, personnel visit schools and check on the health of uh, uh, children in schools. Uh, there are also spatial differences with regard to how the health of children are checked in different schools. For example, there are locations within India where certain kinds of disease incidence or disease burden is high than in other places. For example, malaria is a disease which affects uh, adults and children alike, but then children fall prey to it more. Um, similarly, Japanese encephalitis is a disease which affects uh, children more. So, there are special targeted programs also uh, which is based upon disease surveillance and disease burden profiles where governments intervene. There is a fifth way in which governments intervene and that is primarily through uh, rigorous control of prices in the uh, healthcare industry which is uh, controlled by the government and services and products such as vaccines for example are often subsidized for greater use by people. Uh, again, you do not have to look very far if you look at the COVID-19 vaccine and how it is being provided in many places free of cost and at a nominal price. Also, you will be able to picture in your mind as to how governments can control uh, the production of health uh, within uh, an economy. Central and state governments also provide special assistance for people wanting to have access to uh, medical education, for providing education to people who want to enter the healthcare field. Special cadres of medical and paramedical staff are also uh, created to address the needs of population in distress. So, central and state governments make a deliberate attempt to ensure that certain workforce, um, medical and paramedical workforce is created within the system exactly as the way we create uh, workforce for the army and various other kinds of uh, uh, services within the economy. It becomes the responsibility of the central and the state governments to ensure that a certain staff is created to address the health needs of the population. And finally, how does the government involve itself? It involves itself by conducting intensive research in the healthcare sector through various sponsored institutions. They may be sponsoring uh, institutions or private entities. Governments also do their own expenditure on creating infrastructure and research facilities. For example, the Indian Council of Medical Research in India. And there are many such uh, research institutions that make a sizable amount of investment as far as provisioning of healthcare research is concerned, which plays a very important role ultimately in the production of health in the uh, economy. Now, the fact that government intervenes in the healthcare markets also raises a few questions, very relevant questions which we need to bear in mind. Why does the government involve itself so much in the financing of healthcare? This question is partially answered because we understand that health is a, it's a basic human right and as, as much as it's a basic human right, the well-being of people is of utmost importance to any modern society and therefore, because we have modern welfare states and therefore, governments involve themselves so much in the financing of healthcare. But there are other relevant questions. For example, why do we spend so much effort controlling prices in healthcare in contrast to those in other industries? Because other industries also impact the lives of individuals. But why is it that the governments spend more uh, particularly on the healthcare institutions? What leads the government to intensively monitor and control the simple process of firms entering and exiting an industry? Why do governments offer support for medical education process? Why does the government concern itself uh, so much with what drugs we take? Why does the healthcare sector receive favorable tax treatments and how much is its size and shape influenced due to such taxes? Now, these are just a list of few questions that we should concern ourselves with when we are studying government intervention in the uh, healthcare markets. But Understand that in spite of the overwhelming role played by the governments in healthcare markets, some governments intervene more and some governments intervene less. 
which uh, the estimates uh, of uh, what proportion of GDP is actually spent on healthcare gives us a sense of what is the commitments of the governments with regard to healthcare expenses as well. And these are questions that we cannot address without understanding the development linkages with the healthcare markets. And we will study about these development linkages with the health sector as we move on because this is not the class in which we can um, dwell upon as far as these questions are concerned. And these are very uh, pertinent questions which uh, needs to be understood by looking at country case studies and there are numerous debates that surround these kinds of questions as well. Uh, apart from the question of resource constraint and whether a government has resource constraint, whether a government can or cannot spend and what are the different sources of financing and why the government should spend. These are uh, often questions uh, which include uh, the idea of efficiency versus equity uh, which we must tackle at some point of time in this course. Now, there is a second element as far as unusual characteristics is concerned and that I have already flagged off which is called uncertainty. Now, this uncertainty is an important aspect of human life and it almost affects almost all profit seeking behaviors in the economy. But as I have already mentioned, uncertainty is a characteristic which uh, we encounter in the health system at almost every step. So, uh, as I have said that decisions to use healthcare begin with random events. You may complain of a broken arm, you may have an accident, you may have heart attacks, you may have different kinds of communicable diseases suddenly erupting. Uh, so, therefore, they are random events. Uh, but sometimes a patient consumer makes a choice of healthcare because uh, she is concerned about the possibilities of an illness. But sometimes a patient consumer makes a choice of a healthcare but is uncertain about the outcome of the choice that has been made. Okay? So, uh, therefore, some medical events create confusion based upon uncertainty about the possibility of the illness, but some of the confusions also arise because of the uncertainty relating the outcome of the treatment that the patient consumer takes for a certain disease also. But the uncertainty does not just affect the patient consumer as I have just mentioned, it also affects the, uh, the service provider, in this case let us say a doctor. So, like the patient consumer, a provider also confronts uncertainty about the treatment outcome because the outcome of the treatment is not just entirely dependent upon the knowledge base of the service provider who in this case is the doctor, but it also may be affected because of the personal and social traits of the person who is seeking treatment. Okay? So, therefore, providers also confront uncertainty of various kinds and there are many unknowns as far as the uh, disease treatment from the point of view of the uh, uh, healthcare provider is concerned. Now, doctors often recommend treatment at vastly different rates, although situations may be similar. And from the patient consumer point of view, therefore, a relevant question is how is it possible that such kind of medical confusion can persist even when you have such uh, scientific ways of assessing what kind of treatment should take place. So, these are again very relevant question uh, that one uh, needs to be aware of. Now, we often behave differently in different areas of uncertainty. For example, when it comes to new drugs in the market, the government monitors intensively as to who is taking the drug, what is the impact of the drug, is it a fair, which section of the population it is affecting more, whether the impact is high in the urban areas, in the rural areas, within the rural areas, whether there is further spatial disaggregation with regard to the impact of drugs. So, the governments actually monitor very intensively as far as drugs is concerned. But with regard to efficacy of a new surgical technique, suppose I have a broken limb and I uh, go to a certain doctor who uses a very traditional practice of uh, carrying out a surgery on me, but there is another uh, doctor who has very sophisticated tools and techniques of carrying out a surgery on me. Now, it is ultimately a surgical intervention which affects my well-being, the production of my health within the economy. But when it comes to the efficacy of a new surgical technique, we license the providers broadly and we entrust them to make appropriate decisions. We do not, the governments do not monitor these decisions very closely and why is it so? This is a question that definitely needs addressing. Mm, is it the fact that there are certain areas within the medical uh, sector which has an effect on the production of health that needs monitoring and there are certain areas that does not need monitoring and what role does profit motive have to play in areas such as this is a very important uh, uh, question that we need to understand. 
Now, uh, moving on, uh, there is a third uh, unusual aspect of the healthcare sector which impacts uh, uh, the trading of health within the healthcare market or which impacts production of health in the healthcare market and that is referred to as asymmetric knowledge. Now, what is asymmetric knowledge here? You see, symmetry exists when two objects are identical in shape, size or power. When two people bargain in an economic exchange, if one person holds far more relevant information than the other person or the other party, then we can say that there is an issue of asymmetric information here. And you can guess very well that in the healthcare setup, it is almost always usually the patient consumer who has less information than the service provider who in this case is a doctor who has more access to specialized knowledge and therefore knows what kind of a treatment to give for the uh, disease that the patient consumer has encountered. But in this case, uh, the standard rules of uh, economics that uh, the consumer has to be armed with perfect information should know about the entire market and the market conditions and should have a complete information about the market conditions before being able to make a choice or before being able to place a demand on the market is clearly violated because the consumer uh, patient here is solely dependent upon the specialized knowledge of the uh, producer here who in this case is a doctor and who may or may not reveal the entire information to the consumer patient and therefore it gives rise to the problems of asymmetric information here. Now, in a doctor-patient case, a patient usually is more than willing to share all the problems faced by the consumer, which means that the consumer here is uh, willing to reveal entire information, whereas the service provider may or may not reveal entire information. Usually, professional ethics and code of conduct necessitate uh, it for the doctors to reveal the entire information and also because if there is an element, basic element of trust between the doctor and the patient, the entire information is revealed. But sometimes this may be violated due to a simple profit uh, motive and usually it is a simple profit motive that can lead the doctor into making different kinds of choices for the consumer patient here. Okay. So, uh, that is at the heart of uh, asymmetric knowledge and how that can impact uh, the demand and supply of healthcare in a healthcare market. Now, as with many other facets of healthcare economics, this situation is not unique to healthcare. Many of us may have confronted these kinds of asymmetric knowledge as far as many other normal buying choices are concerned. For example, I go to the market to buy a phone. I may not have complete knowledge about uh, the features of a phone and I might want the seller to be uh, able to give me more information about the phone. But there is something very critical which distinguishes healthcare from these kinds of buying choices that we make in the market because then in the case of markets which does not have a direct bearing on the health of an individual, you can move from one seller to the other very quickly. Whereas in the case of service providers as far as healthcare is concerned, the consumer patient cannot move from one service provider to the other very quickly because your um, life is on uh, fire at this point of time. But that does not mean that you know there are no mechanisms evolved to be able to deal with these kinds of transactions in the healthcare market. Um, so, there are various kinds of uh, mechanisms have evolved over a period of time and one of the important reasons for uh, Kenneth Arrow uh, who was a pioneer in healthcare economics having uh, come up with uh, various classical papers on healthcare econo on economics which ultimately helped to uh, us to analyze the economics of health and education uh, has noted that one of the important reasons for professions to evolve with a code of ethics and uh, commonly professional licensor is to provide an institutional mechanism to help balance transactions such as a more knowing doctor and a less knowing uh, patient. Now, healthcare industry is definitely an area in which professionals dominate the supply of activity and the disparity of knowledge between the doctor and the patient is larger than say a customer and an automobile mechanic let us say. The same example if we take that as a customer I go to an auto mechanic to uh, be able to buy a certain service and I may not have enough information, complete information about automobiles and I may be traded information that is uh, that is not sufficient for me. Uh, however, 
you know if you are a reasonably intelligent person and if you are a, a rational person you can learn quite a bit about auto repair in a relatively short period of time whereas the knowledge that the doctors or the healthcare service providers have is way more specialized for a common person to grasp in a short period of time the ability of individual customers to learn about the activity they purchase from other places therefore places a constraint on the amount of fraud one might expect in the healthcare sector and this process of acquiring information about the quality of mechanics or doctors and dentists proves very important in the functioning of healthcare markets so first government intervention second the element of uncertainty and third the element of asymmetric knowledge is an important factor that affects the functioning of healthcare uh, markets now finally let us come to the aspect of externalities now this is a characteristic that separates healthcare market from almost all areas of economic activities and uh, external benefits and costs arise when the person's actions create uh, benefits for or impose costs on others and when those benefits and costs are not privately accounted for in individuals decisions okay uh, many early success in medicines uh, dealt with communicable diseases probably the purest form of an event uh, with externalities uh communicable diseases such as covid-19 or common flu they are some of the purest form of an event with externalities because what happens is when people get sick with a communicable disease such as a common flu or covid-19 they not only bear their own illness but they also increase the risk that their relatives friends and neighbors will contract the same illness and when they take steps to avoid such diseases they confer a benefit not only on themselves but also on those around them um like for example the social benefit of getting a covid vaccine uh, far exceeds the private benefit a person may draw from it and if people balance the cost of uh, covid uh, vaccine which may be measured uh, by monetary costs the time involved in going to the uh, vaccination center and getting a vaccine shot the inconvenience of it all of being able to go and then get a vaccine the pain and the risk of an adverse reaction and if if a person is comparing these private costs with just the private benefits for example the reduced risk of contracting the virus during an ongoing wave then there is a tendency on the part of private people to under invest in vaccine shots from a societal perspective but as far as the governments uh, are concerned because it has huge positive externalities because getting a vaccination has huge positive externalities it may be important for a government to intervene there and ensure that the facility is uh, provided now most of the major healthcare activities uh, which have uh, uh, significant externalities have become a part of the background of our society but we do not often recognize their presence or consequences for example um, sewage control or mosquito control quarantine rules for certain diseases and massive inoculation programs um for infectious diseases if not at the scale as we are witnessing today they often pass unnoticed by an average uh, person so externalities play a very important role in provisioning of healthcare services and we need to understand that whenever there are huge negative externalities or positive externalities involved governments do step in uh, because this is an area which affects a large population base now that is not to say that private activities related to healthcare also does not create external costs for example every time a patient receives an antibiotic injection the odds go up slightly that a drug resistant strain of bacterium will emerge which is immune to the current antibiotic in relative closed communities such as nursing homes this can become a serious problem okay so then how does one take care of these kinds of externalities that is also an area which forms a subject matter of healthcare provisioning uh, in the healthcare markets but we must note that although externalities are an important uh, part of some medical activities they are not unique to healthcare markets because it does affect various other sectors of the economy and at the end we must note that there has to be different ways of valuation of these kinds of externalities that we uh, come across so what there are four important characteristics that uh, we must bear in mind when we are studying a healthcare market when we are studying demand and supply of healthcare markets one is government intervention 
second is the uh, element of uncertainty, third is the element of asymmetry in knowledge as far as uh, the provider and the consumer patient is concerned and finally the huge presence of externalities and how that needs to be valued in the economy for uh, proper provisioning of healthcare services. So, let me summarize uh, in the form of bullet points here. We understand before beginning to understand the microeconomic foundations of healthcare economics, we must bear in mind that healthcare market has certain unusual characteristics. They may not be unique to the healthcare market, but they definitely affect the healthcare market more. Secondly, there are limits to whether or not health can be traded like normal economic goods. Can we imagine uh, health or for that matter education being traded in the market like we trade ink pens or papers and books and so on where it is very easy to value what is the private benefit or utility that a person derives out of a certain good and therefore what is the amount that needs to be paid for that good because it, the utility that you are deriving out of a good has a is private you know it is you know how much you want to pay for a certain good in the market whereas when health and education is concerned because it has so, some of these very unusual characteristics, is it possible for the person concerned to value by himself or herself how much he or she wants to pay for a certain education, uh, for a certain uh, service. Uh, similar goes with the case of when we come to the subject matter of education in this module, you would see that the amount of price that we pay for private tuitions or private education can also be analyzed somewhat similarly. Governments undoubtedly play an important role in the healthcare market and we have already seen what are the different ways in which governments play an important role. Sometimes government compulsorily play a role and they may compel people to enter certain kinds of markets such as the health insurance market uh, because to avoid unnecessary and undue pressure on the uh, private healthcare uh, uh, system, uh, health system. Now, um, this uh, the government of course plays an important role because of the externalities uh, present and also because health is a matter of human right and cannot be left entirely to the market forces. And finally, we also uh, understand that healthcare expenditure varies across countries which also means that some governments will intervene more and some governments will intervene less. But we need to understand these issues by linking them with development issues. Uh, because um, the choice for a government to how much to spend in the healthcare market is not an easy one because like in the case of other choices that we are making in the economy, uh, if you bear in mind the production possibility curve, you would know that there are constraints to how much the governments can spend on different uh, aspects of the economy and therefore when the decision to spend on health is concerned, these factors also come in. But that is where also the uh, debates come in as to which sector uh, needs to be prioritized in which context and so on. So, we will look at some of these issues in our subsequent uh, classes. Uh, for this lecture, my primary reference is a textbook uh, of health economics uh, by Charles Phelps. It is a 2018 uh, publication, it is a sixth edition. Uh, from the Taylor and Francis group. Those of you who can have access to this uh, book may uh, please read through chapters 1 uh, and 2 of this book. However, those of you who do not have access to this book, you can uh, go through the uh, PPT that I am sharing and the transcript of the PPT that will be shared with you. Thank you.